Hey guys, welcome back to Learning T3. In the last video, we created some transitions. So now when our chart comes into focus, it does this cool animation and we can hover over each bar and get the data. Now what we need to do is set up an, uh, a Y axis and an X axis with some ticks so that we can actually see the data here. All right, um, without having to hover over. So to do this, we're going to need to create two more scales. So we want a, a horizontal scale and a vertical scale, and they're going to be very similar to the X and Y scales. All right, so I'm going to create them down here because I just kind of want to, I don't want to mix them up with the X and Y scales. All right, uh, but actually we can probably just copy these and bring them down here. All right, and what we'll do, oops, what we'll do is change this, change the Y to the V scale, to the vertical scale. And all we need to do here, all we need to change is the order of this zero and height. Okay, we want the height to be first. Okay, if we don't do this and we leave it the other way, then the zero is going to be end up up here. All right, and it's going to go the opposite way. Um, for this one, this is going to be the H scale, and we can actually leave that as it is for now. All right, so now what we're going to do is create our axis. So this is going to be the vertical axis. So we're going to create a variable called V axis, and I'm going to set this to d3.svg and then dot axis. Okay, that's the method we need to use. And then what we need to do is input the scale. So this is going to use the V scale and we need to provide the orientation so that's orient and we want this to be on the left of the chart all right uh, next is the number of ticks that we want to show so we're going to set that to five so if we look at the chart we're going to have five different chicks chicks <laughs> five well that'd be nice too but we're going to have five different ticks here that represent uh, the data points all right, next we can do, uh, let's see, let's do tick padding. And that's just what it sounds like, just some padding for each tick. And that's going to be five as well. All right, um, now we're going to create the guide for the access. So this will be the uh, V guide, and we'll call it V guide. And we'll set that to d3.select. And we want to select the SVG element. And then what we're going to do is append a group. So to do this, we do append G. Okay, so whatever we put after this is going to put that inside of a group. All right, and it'll actually, there'll actually be a G element in the HTML wrapped around it. All right, so what we want to put here is the V axis. And we want to pass in the guide, v guide. Okay, and then we're going to say v guide, and we want to add an attribute. And this is going to be the transform attribute, which has to do with the positioning of this group. And this will be dynamic, um, but for now, I'm just going to set it to 35. Uh, let's, no, we need to put this inside of a translate function. So translate, and then uh, actually we don't need quotes, just 35, 10. And we actually have to put quotes around this, around the translate. All right, and then what we're going to do is we need to select the path. So we're going to say vguide. Uh, vguide dot select all path, and then we'll do the fill. So this is the line that the ticks are on. All right, so we're just gonna say fill none. Uh, this to be in quotes. 
fill none, and then we're going to set the stroke. And uh, you can make it whatever color you want. I'm just going to stick with black. Okay, and then we want to select the line. So we're going to say V guide. This is all SV has to do with SVG paths and lines. Uh, v guide dot select all, and we want to pass in line. And then we're going to set that to black as well. So I'll just copy that. And there we go. So that's going to be our vertical guide. So if we go ahead and save that. All right, so now we have a guide. We have our five ticks. It's 200, well, zero to 1,000. And you can't see the one in the 1,000. But don't worry about that yet. We're going to be setting margins and positioning, so uh, we'll be fixing that. So at least we have it there. So now I want to get the horizontal. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the axis and the guide. And paste that in. And then we're just going to change everything to H. So H axis, H scale. H guide. Okay, and I think that's all of them. All right, so we're going to just edit this a bit. Uh, the orient is going to be on the bottom. Don't need these. We're going to replace this with tick values. All right, and we're going to pass in the H scale domain. And we want to add a filter. And then inside here, we're going to put a function. Okay, we're going to pass in D and I. And then we're going to, whoop, oh, I have two T's here, that's not right. Let's return. And we want to say I modulus. And then we want the, um, the length of the data. So I'm going to say my data dot length. And we want to have five ticks on the bottom no matter what. So we're going to say slash five. All right, because essentially what the numbers down here represent is just the the the, um, the range of the data, the, the amount of data you have. All right, and we don't want to have a tick for every single bar because if these, if we had a ton of data, then it's just gonna we're gonna have a bunch of ticks here, and I, I just want to stick with five. All right, so that's what this little equation is gonna do. And then for the guide, we're gonna say H guide select. SVG append the group uh, H access H guide attribute uh, we'll keep that for now yeah the rest will just keep for now let's see what happens okay so we have the guide uh, up at the top here so what we're gonna have to do is factor in the height in this um, in this translate so we're going to say, let's see, we want to add in the height variable. So we'll say height um, plus 10. No, that's not right. This needs to be in parentheses. Or is it, I think it's minus 10. Okay, so let's go up a little bit more. We'll say minus 20. And let's actually do 30. Okay, so 
since we have zero, you know what, let's change this to six points because we'll have zero and then the five. And yeah, okay, so that works. So now we have our guide, we have our axis and our guides. And uh, what we need to do now is line everything up because right now it's all out of whack. So to do that, we're going to add, we're going to create an object up here for our margin values. So I'm going to go right under the data and create a variable called margin. And that's going to have the top, we'll say 30, uh, right be 30 as well and bottom 40 and left is 50 okay now we're gonna have to factor these in in a lot of different places all right including the height and width so height will be whatever we want 500 but then we're also gonna uh, take away the margin dot top as well as the bottom all right, and then for the width, we want margin right, and also, whoops, should be margin dot right, and margin dot left. All right, and let's go down here, and we're gonna look at the width right here. We're gonna have the width attribute, and then we need to add margin dot right, and left. Okay, the height, we're going to add the top and bottom. So margin dot top plus margin dot bottom. And we need to also add uh, transform. So let's actually add a group right under the height. Okay, so we're going to say dot append g, and then we're going to do attribute transform. Then we want our whoops, we want our translate. Okay, now translate. This is going to be the margin left and the margin top. So margin dot left, margin dot top. All right, and then down here, if we look at the V guide translate, we're going to change this and we're going to add our margins. So this should have quotes and then plus. This is going to be margin dot left. All right, and then this one is going to be margin dot top. Okay, now the H guide. This first one is going to be the left margin. And this one here is going to be height plus the top margin. All right, so let's save that and see how it looks. And that looks perfect. So that is our chart. Now, if um, let's go ahead and test it. So if we put, for instance, let's change the thousand back under back to 500 and reload and now you'll see that it's only now going to go up to what is it uh, 720 is the highest all right so no matter what we do with this data um, it should be able to display correctly all right so what we can do here instead of just manually adding a bunch of uh, different numbers here if we want to test for a lot of data then we could actually just do a loop. So let me just show you what I mean. So we could say, uh, we're gonna do a for loop and we'll say var i is equal to zero. 
<coughs> and then as long as i is less than and we'll create um, let's say data count which we'll create in a second um, and we want to increment and then what we'll do is take <coughs> excuse me um, my data dot and then we want to push because we want to add to this array and we'll say math dot round and then here, <coughs> and here we want to say math dot random because we want any number between let's say one and we'll say one and a thousand so math dot random uh, times one thousand okay and we're gonna have to create that variable my data so we'll say var my data is equal to an empty array all right and as for the variable Say var data count, and we'll set that to 50. All right, so let's give that a shot, see what happens. And there we go, it accommodates for 50 different units of data. And it's totally random, so each time we reload, it's going to look different. Okay, uh, now if we want to sort this that's actually really easy to do so if we just go let's see where do we want to do this we'll just do it right here so we can say my data dot sort all right and then in here we're going to put in a function okay and let's put in a and b and then all we need to do here is return a, B. And there we go. Actually, since um, we're going to have to do this, uh, do this over. So this equation right here, my data dot length slash six, we're going to put that back to five and that should work. There we go. All right. So you see we have 50 points of data. The highest is at a thousand. All right, if I go ahead and just change that, um, change that back to 500, it's going to generate data below 500. All right, and you'll see we can just hover over to see the different individual points. So that's our chart. Now this code um, I will put on GitHub and I'll try to get a link in the description. Uh, but this just gives you a glimpse of, of what you can do uh, and bar charts are just one of the many many different kinds of uh, data visualizations that you can create with D3 alright so I might go on to create another video or a couple videos on um, creating different kinds of charts pie charts um, networks scatter plots things like that but uh, this is meant to just be a, a basic intro to D3 so hopefully you guys enjoyed this and if you did please subscribe leave a like leave a comment whatever you can do is fine all right so thanks for watching and i will see you next time